So number 36, June, 2022. First thing I wanna just cover. See that I think I covered this the other day. Algebraically, that just means you can't guess and check. Like you're desperate and you have no idea. Maybe the answer is X equals one, Y equals two. And you just guess correctly and that won't get you any credit. All right, we need to show all our work here. Uh, when it says, when you're solving a system, that's back in your day. Hey, remember uh, substitution, elimination, that type of stuff? That's what it's asking for here. Solve for X and Y. And usually how we do these is sometimes they're Y equals and Y equals, and I just take one and plug it in for the other, right? That's what we end up doing. But it's not Y equals Y equals. Can you make one of them pretty easily into Y equals is my question now. Can you get one of these equations into y equals so I can substitute in? Which out of these two is it pretty easy to substitute in for? Or solve for y? Come on, let's get there. We got more people absent today, huh? Six. What's a more easy, which equation, the first or the second? Second. How do I solve for y in the second one? Let's roll. Seven. Tim, that's you. How do I solve for y in the second one here? You have to subtract five to both sides. Yep. And I end up with y equals 2x minus 5. Now do you see what I mean by substitute in? I take 2x minus 5, go to the first equation, and wherever I see y, a y, type it in or plug it in. So now I need somebody right now rewrite the first equation for me. Rewrite it for me. Uh, eight, you want to rewrite that one for me? X squared yep. plus 2x minus 5 squared equals 25. Perfect. Great job. Great job. And now we got to solve it for x. And hopefully we're not making common mistakes here. X squared. Come on, don't do this to me. What are we, how are we doing taking care of this? You'll, you'll get 4x. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to know what I'm going to get. Here's how. Oh. Ha! No! No! Stop! All this is telling me is take this and rewrite it again, twice, and do double distribution here. That's what it's telling me when I see a whole parenthesis squared. Write it twice, double distribute. Go. It's on you now. 2x times 2x, 2x times negative 5. Come on, let's go. Dig deep. Get after it. Dig deep. Help me out. Let's do this. Nine. Two X times two X. Oh, yep. And then you got two middle terms that you can combine and what you get when you combine them. Uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And then what was your last term? Plus Great. Great work. Look at your left side still. It's not clean yet. Left side could still be combined. Clean it up. X squared and four X squared. 5x squared. So here you go. 5x squared. You got your minus 20x and your plus 25 equal to 25. Good work. Good work. Where, what's your next move, though? So try, try to find the both Get sides. one side equal to zero, right? Don't. I know somebody said in the last class, take a GCF. Not yet. Not yet. You can't do any factoring until it's equal to zero. So get the 25 over. Oh, what happened here? A little see you later, huh? 5x squared minus 20x, no more 25s, equal to zero. Now it's factoring time. You know, like I always ask you to look for a GCF. There is one. What is it? What's my GCF up here? Three. Um, Come on. You're, you're better than this. 5x squared minus 20x. Oh, yeah. 
GCF. Five. No. no. Oh, 5X. 5X. There you go. Take out a 5X. What are we left with when I take out a 5X? One. Thanks. Five. All right, so I need a value of x here. So what am I doing to those 5x and the x minus 4? This is when you take them and set them equal to 0, right? So I take x minus 4, set it equal to 0. And what else do I need to set equal to 0? 5x, darn right. i got to take 5x and set it equal to 0. So go ahead, solve for x on both of them. Thirteen. Uh, four and zero. Good job. X equals four and X equals zero. Good work, everyone. Good work. But this is a four pointer. I'm only going to give you three points on this. When you solve a system of equations, two at a time, or maybe remember last year we haven't done it yet, but we have to review. Remember doing the X, Y, Z ones? Did you just solve for X? No, you had to plug it back in. It's all for Y and Z. Same thing here. When you solve a system with two equations, x and y, with x and y, not only do you need x, you also need its y value. So first one, x is 0. Plug it back into either of the two you think is easiest and solve for y. Then take 4, plug it in for x, solve for y. It's up to you. I don't care which equation you use. I know probably one's easier than the other. All right, so take 0, plug it in for x, and solve for y, and then do the same thing with 4. And I'll ask somebody what we have here. So when x is 0, plug it in. What would you get for your y? And then plug in 4. Right. Anybody here? Ten? Is there a ten in the house? Not here. I can get heads back in the building here. Seven? When when x is equal to zero, you'll get negative five. For y, good. And did you do four, Tim? Yeah. What did you get for y? Three. Yep, there you go. I need both answers for full credit. Four points out of four points. Four and three, zero and negative five. When I solve a system. Any questions? I just wanted to do that one. That seems to be coming up more and more too. We're all good? Okay, January 2020, everyone. 2022? January 2020, please. The last time any of my students took a Regents. For like one of these questions, is this like one where it could be like there would be one answer? No. No. Great que great question, Jake. This would not be one where you'd have to reject. There's right. really two kinds of problems that you would look to reject. Anything where you solve with a radical in it. Hmm. Okay, you solve a variable that's got a radical in it, or anything that's got a log in it. You want to okay. make sure you check. Okay, great question. But no, you will not be able you will not be rejecting here. Radicals and logs only. What? All right, everyone ready? January 2020, pull it up or have it out in front of you as a hard copy. Ready to go? Yeah. I got four, five multiple choices. What's your deal, though? Um, it's not. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, you, you had tried for multiple choices for part four. I know, Tim. Thank you. I have taught this before. I think I have four or five multiple choices to do together, and then I got six for you to do on your own through tonight. All right. Here we go. I think number five we're going to start out with. 
three, sorry, three. Number three. We had a quick debate uh, last period. Uh, Emeline, um, Emeline, Emeline, Emeline. We're going with Emeline. All right. Uh, well, Emeline here tried to figure out what 5x squared plus 5x squared minus 5 all squared was. We saw her work here in four steps. Uh, is there is it all completely correct or are there mistakes somewhere? And if there are, where are the mistakes? Okay. So let's look at the first one. Uh, 25x squared. Looks like she took this one right here, 5x all squared, and got 25x squared. Is that correct? 5x squared equals 25x squared? No. That's correct. Yep. So step one looks good. Uh, let's go step one to step two. Anybody see anything or think it's correct? She didn't double the straight. Darn right. She did what I just got fired up about, didn't she? She goes squared. She squared, even though she squared this wrong, because what's 5x squared times 5x squared? 25x to the fourth. Yeah. So, but she didn't double distribute, right? Step two, she didn't double distribute. So at least, what? We're good? At least we know step two is incorrect. I wouldn't just answer. I just wouldn't. Let's keep going. Look at step two to step. Even though we know she did it right, we still got to check the rest of her work. Step two to three, how's that look? Good. 25x squared plus 25x squared equals 50x squared. Yeah. Okay, so that looks all right. And now let's look at step three to four. Step four was wrong. It's not just wrong, that's embarrassing, right? 75, everyone see, I can't combine those to get 75x squared. So actually she made two mistakes, step two and step four, okay? We all right how I know it's step two and four? Looking at her work and why? All right, let's go. I'm not gonna waste time then. Four, before we do number four, please have your sheet out. That is the formulas you will not receive, not receive. This mini uh, packet I've given you of the formulas you will not receive. The ones we're responsible for. All right, everyone's got it. We're good. All right, so here's Susan. This is an investment here type problem. Here's the word I'm looking for right here in the problem. Compound it. All right, compounded. We did a problem last week where I compounded continuously. That was APERT, right? Everyone remembers that one, APERT, if it was compounded continuously. But unfortunately, I can't use this formula in this problem because it's compounded monthly. So what do I use if it's not compounded continuously? Let's look at your sheet. It's right below it. Everyone see compounded any other way? I, that is not, I don't know how you want to say that one, but it's not A per. All right, so here's what the formula we're going to need for this one. Compounded monthly. What do you got? P plus 1 plus R over N. It's not a plus. Oh, it's not. Sorry. One, you think I'd know that, huh? I guess I need a sheet. Times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT. NT. Okay. So if this, that is if it's compounded any other way. If it's continuously, use A per, and you don't plug in for E. All right, who's going to help me plug in here? I need a little stud here. 12? 12? Oh, yeah, Sydney, you got this. All right, ready, Sydney? P, principal. How much am I starting out with investing? So everyone, 2,000 times 1 plus. My rate is but. You won't see me plug 3.2 in here. I need that percent as a decimal in my formula. Three, three, two, yeah, we, we divide it by 100, move it to the left two spots, point oh, 0.032. 
I'm trying to drive that home. Take your percent, change it into a decimal. All right, Sydney, still on you. N is the number of times I'm compounding it. And now here's where the word comes into play. Monthly. Relax, okay? 12. Here are some other words you may see. Ready? Quarterly. Quarterly. Four times. Semi-annually. Semi-annually. Two. Two. Annually. Once a year. Those are the main ones. Annually is one. Semi-annually two, quarterly four, and monthly. All right, and then on the outside, the number of times you're compounding, which we already said was 12, and then T is your time. They didn't give us a time, they just said keep T years. So we just keep it T. Does anybody see this choice? It's correct. Anybody see it up above? Because I don't. What can we keep doing more work with? Yeah, go ahead, Howie. Add the one with the 0.032. Yeah, clean up the inside. Do 1 plus 0.032 divided by 12. We can still clean it up a little bit. Even though you could probably look at this and see which exponent matches, but still, let's keep going. 2,000 times. Clean that up. 1 plus 0.032 divided by 12. And you guys get a long decimal in your calculator. But if you take a look at that decimal, that decimal rounded pretty much comes out to be what? 1.003. 1. 0. Let me put it up on mine here. 1 plus 0. 0.032 divided by 12. All right, I don't see that, but I do see 0. 0.1003, which is that number rounded. So we're going right here. A pert, compounded continuously. Anything else? 1 plus R over N. Anything going? Okay, well, not the last time we see these. Oh, 11, one more probability, type of probability I got to go over. Keep your sheet out, by the way. Don't put it away. Keep your formula sheet out. Probability they're male, given they're left-handed. Make sure you tell them I said I. Give it person is male, given they're left-handed. There's two types of probability questions. First one is going to be independent or not. We have covered that extensively the last week. Last week. The other type of probability question, find the probability this happens, given something else has already occurred. Go to the formula sheet. You're not given. Go to a blank one, number 14. Go to a blank one. Oh. Because I didn't write this one in, so let's write it in now. This is one I forgot to think about. So number 14, probability of A. Anybody remember the symbol for given back when I wasn't here? How you knew it was a given? There was a symbol. It was a vertical bar. A given B, that was given. Anybody want to drop knowledge from that unit? How do you find that probability? What goes on top? What goes on the bottom? Dylan, go ahead. Wasn't it uh, P of A times, or no, P of B times P of, sorry, times P of B times P of A over P of on top, on ready? On top goes A. What's that symbol? And. and B. And on the bottom is whatever's already been given. What has already been given to you in this case? B. Okay, so it's A and B together over whatever's been given B. 
Okay, so there's your given formula. I always like to put it in terms of the actual problem. Probability, read it for me here. Uh, seven, what are we looking for? Probability of what? Of male. Stop, everyone watch what? Male, M. Keep reading, Tim. So given, both. given, stop. Male, given. Left-handed. I always like to put it in my own letters. All right, now use the formula with M and M's and L's. What's going to go on top? Don't give me a number, just give me M's and L's. Uh, six, what should go on top with M's and L's? M. What? No, no, I don't want numbers yet. On top's going to go what? M. All I'm doing here, Ryan, is I'm using my formula I gave you. Instead of A's and B's, I want M's and L's instead. M and L on top, and what's going to go on the bottom? L. All right, here we go. Now let's go give me numbers. How many are male and left-handed? Got to use your chart now. Give me the actual number. Male and left-handed in that chart. 13? So good. Why 100? I added 87 plus 18. No. Okay, that's how many are male. Look, look, I want to know how many are male and left-handed. You just gave me the males no matter how many, what hand they use. 13. 13, right? Both have to occur. Over how many are left-handed in this chart? How many are left-handed in this chart? 10? 15? 24. 24. This is a hey, this is the type of problem. Put it up in the sleeve. I'm done with it. Put it up in the sleeve. I'm done. I can't treat you guys like seniors. God, come on. And if you don't pass, we all know why. I just call right. back my mom. Then just fine. Fine. Do it. I don't care. Don't don't blame me when you don't pass the regents then. All right? Don't blame me. Anytime you're using doing a given problem, anytime you're doing a given, listen to me, anytime you're doing a given problem, you should never get out, go over the total. It should not be out of the total. It should be out of whatever is given. What was given? Left-handed. So I'm not doing total. I'm just doing left-handed only. Everyone got me? Anytime you're doing one of these given problems, it should never be out of the total. It should be out of whatever's given, which is 24 here. All good? Okay, 12. Third type of problem we've done like this. What's it asking for? Rate of That's it, rate of change. Formula we should know. Rate of change, what is it? What's the formula I need? Seven. Tim, what's the formula? Rate of change formula. You change it by on top and then change it X in the bottom. Yep. <coughs> change in Y over the change in X's. All good? But hey, usually we've done this problem two or three times last week. You guys have points, right? An X and a Y and an X and a Y and you plug it in. See what I start you out with? Over the interval zero to six. Anybody know what the zero and the six are gonna be? Six minus zero. No, nope. oh, oh. What's the zero and the six? Those are your X's. All right? I will, a prop, not I. The questions will usually always give you your X's. It's up to you to find the Y values. Last week's problems, we had a graph we always used. If X is zero, here's the Y value on the graph. If X is six, here's the Y value on the graph. I don't have a graph this time. I have an equation. Come on, think about this. How can I, if X is zero, how can I find the Y value that matches it? Jake, plug it in. Plug it in. Take zero, plug it in for X, you'll get its Y value. 
Because this right here, if this is confusing to you, this is the same thing as just saying y. Right? F of x is the same thing as y. Jared, go ahead. Uh, why would it be, why would those both be x's if it's like 0 and 6? You're going over the interval from 0 to 6. So when x equals 0 to x equals 6. No, no, that's a point that you're giving me. Here are your x values they're giving you. From 0 to 6 on the x-axis, what's the rate of change? How do you know that's on the x-axis? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Is that what well, here, well, here you go, too. Here you go, too. Uh, in degrees per minute over the interval 0 to 6. So they're giving me the minutes, which is x. They're telling you over minutes from zero to, so these are zero minutes, six minutes, and what represents minutes? X. So that's how I know too it's on the axis. Okay, Aaron? Is that also why they're in brackets and not a parenthesis? No, bracket, they're in brackets because they want you to include zero and six. That's why they're in brackets. Because if yes, you so gave me parentheses, it wouldn't include. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. that's why they put it in brackets. All right, so you plug in zero, we end up with what, 159? And then you plug in six, and you're gonna get a decimal, which we're not gonna do what to? Round, don't round it. Don't round it, because it could throw off our rate of change. I'm getting 105 and change. Okay, so now plug it in. Plug in your change in Y over change in X's, and I'll ask somebody what you ended up with. Y is on top, X is on the bottom. Ten, Dylan, we got the rate of change. Let me know. You said ten. What's that? You said the number ten. No, three. Yeah, I'll do so. Um, oh, you're not three. Oh no, I, I thought you said ten. Well, it was ten. I don't think ten's here. Oh. Okay. So. Um. So 159 minus 105. Yep. Four, on top. And then on the bottom, zero minus six. Yep. I thought it was y2 minus y1. Is that a different thing? Order doesn't matter unless you... Look, if I go 159 minus this, I got to go 0 minus 6. Or I could go 105 minus this, but I got to go 6 minus 0. You got to pick whatever y coordinate you pick first, Jared. You got to pick the x coordinate first as well. Um, 52.588948 over negative 6. Which would be? Negative 8.931491468. There we go. So negative 8.93. And this is why you're going to get blown out of the water if you don't prepare. Notice why they, any idea why they have 0.11 and negative 0.11? That would be what you would get if you did change in X over change in Y and made that silly mistake because you didn't prepare. They're, the multiple choices there are for you to get trapped. And they know what traps put you in. So that's why you got to be on your game. All right. And prepare like it's no, no tomorrow. All right. I got one more with you. Then you're on your own. Number 17. We 
Which pattern's geometric? Quick review, what's geometric again? How do I know if it's geometric? The, the, the first value is added to it. Nope. That's another type of sequence. Geometric sequence, how do I know? Anybody want to take it? All right, Dylan? Um, is it when it's multiplied? You're multiplying by a number, yep. Multiplying by a number. Uh, while we're here, what's the other type of sequence called? You got geometric, and we also talked about arithmetic. Yep, arithmetic. That is when you add a number. Okay, so arithmetic is adding a number, geometrics multiplying. And you have to multiply by the same number all throughout. Uh, anybody, anybody getting rid of any of these choices pretty quick? Or you're definitely not multiplying the same number all throughout? Anybody eliminating something real quick, real quick? Two, definitely two, because one times four gives you four, and I don't multiply by four again. And then six times three gives me 18, but I'm not multiplying by three again. So now you're down to one and four. Out of those two choices, which one am I multiplying by the same one, same number every time? Which pattern, one or four? What'd you get, Jake? I got one. One, yep, you should be multiplying by negative 0.75. Easiest way to figure out what you need to multiply by, take a term, divide it, divide it by its previous, and see if that number you can multiply through all the way out. All right, here are your six I'm recommending for right now into tonight. Uh, nothing that's gonna blow you out of the water. If they're either store ones or something we've done in the past. All right, one, six, seven, nine, ten, thirteen. If you want to try them, a week from Thursday. You guys that were out printing Thursday, multiple choice quiz, ten questions on formative for an actual grade that counts towards the second quarter. Let's go start trying some of these out. What is the 